The Skyline GTR, an iconic car of almost mythical status, known only to the few for its power, its speed, and its handling. It's a racer disguised as a roadster, burning up the track at over 300 kilometers per hour. It's the ultimate bad boy's car. The star of movies, games, and manga comics. Business idol Carlos Goel, the charismatic Nissan boss, is determined that the GTR will be born again, better than ever, designed afresh, filled with groundbreaking technology, and sold to the public. But how will the world react to this new muscle car? Can it beat the all-time sports car classic, the Porsche 911 Turbo? And will Goen himself even survive the supercar? Friday, midnight. Japan's back streets. The asphalt belongs to the GTR, the Gran Turismo racer. This is Japan's ultimate muscle car. And the race boys are out, reclaiming the night, tearing up the neighborhood, pushing the speed limit, avoiding the cops. There are nights like this wherever there are open roads and GTRs. There's a secret world centered around this car. It's a classic and a cult. And those in the know worship the GTR and its power to ravage the road. Nissan stopped making the Skyline GTR some years ago. And of course, its rarity just adds to its charisma. In Japan, Nissan boss Carlos Goen is mobbed wherever he goes. It's unusual for a businessman to draw such adulation. But then Goen's an unusual kind of businessman. For one thing, he's a foreigner running a Japanese company. And for another, he managed to turn Nissan around, taking it from a loss of over 20 billion US dollars to a profit of 2.7 billion. When he arrived in 1999, he slashed 21,000 jobs and closed five plants. It was a rude awakening in a very, very polite corporate culture. Three weeks ago, we declared the Nissan revival complete by delivering our most difficult Nissan 180 commitment, one million additional sales. But success talks, and Goen became a hero. Thank you for your trust. Thank you for your trust. He even appears in Japanese comics known as manga. And in the automobile business, he's known as a golden boy. Besides having this tremendous charisma, this tremendous leadership, he's got an eye for the details, he knows what's important in a business, and so you put a lot of that together and you have a very powerful business leader. Today, he's come to the Tokyo Motor Show, and he's about to make what will probably be the most important presentation of his life. He wants the world to see his company in a whole new way, and he's heading out to convince it face to face. The program is ready. Hopefully oh, that's good. That's good. So the day's got to be under control. Nothing's left to chance. It's going to be very busy, yeah. but I, I think somebody should indicate to people that they can go up. They're already done. They're already done. And they're already more or less all the spaces are already taken with the TVs. You know, that's what... Uh, there are just minutes to go. It's the culmination of five years preparation, unveiling his Japanese supercar. But the GTR story begins much earlier. The GTR has been the jewel in Nissan's crown since it first appeared. It's known as a supercar, 
a high-performance road car with a top speed of more than 300 kilometers per hour. You need um, something, a highlight to a, to a lineup, something that really stands out, a, a great sports car. Every manufacturer needs one, and the GTR is, I think, Japan's greatest car. When the race boys pull up at the Daikoku car park, it's clear that although they're pretty fast, they're not really that furious. This is a chance for them all to admire each other's wheels and generally see what they can do to whip that little bit extra out of their beasts. The guys that bought these cars knew what it was capable of, so they immediately pumped it up to 400, 600 horsepower. Some even took it up to 800 horsepower. The chassis is so good in this car that it will take that sort of stress. That's what Nissan developed back in 1989. A road-going car that is based on a race car. And nobody had ever done this before. The first GTRs were race cars, blasting around tracks and showing the opposition just who was boss. 20 years later, the third generation Skyline GTR was packed with new technologies designed to prove that Nissan's engineering was second to none, including that of their arch rival, Porsche. It was all-wheel drive and all-wheel steering, with all the road holding that implies. A microprocessor monitored the car's movements 100 times per second, controlling it around high-speed corners. And the thing was, this race car was available to the general public to take on the road, but only in Japan initially. Nissan obviously didn't really understand what they created. They almost created a monster. For some foreigners, being transferred to work in Japan has allowed them to realize the GTR dream. Uh, it's amazing what technology uh, of this uh, type can do. It's now 2.8 liter, uh, been fully built uh, engine. So now I'm looking at about 730 horsepower to the wheels. So it's really something special from such a small displacement engine. It's quite a face. It's a wolf in sheep's clothing and a real wolf. Like that. It's a track car. It's a day car. You can drag race it. You can pretty much absolutely abuse the car, and it will still love you the next morning. These guys idolize the GTR, but they've heard that soon a whole new model is coming out. And for the first time, this GTR will not come in sheep's clothing. Obviously, they're concerned when it comes to tampering with a legend. Carlos Goen also cares about the GTR heritage. He is determined the new car will be a worthy successor. It should match or beat the benchmark sports car, the iconic Porsche 911 Turbo, one of the quickest production cars you can buy. And as if that's not enough, it should beat the 911 in its own backyard. On one of the toughest road tracks in the world, the Nordschleife of Germany's Nürburgring. I told them no compromise. I don't care how much time it's going to take. I want a very strong performance car. Uh, and they ended up saying we're going to need four to five years because they need to build a completely new platform with a lot of technologies. As for its design, well, there, Gohan only has one stipulation. The only constraint I put on them, I told them I want uh, round tail lamps, period. I want them big because this has always been the signature of the GTR and I want them back. Designers from Japan, from Europe and from the US all pitch in with initial sketches. All told, 50 of them make it through to Shiro Nakamura, Nissan's design chief. Some are very good, some are not. But I do remember one sketch. It's not very far from this. The important thing is that the new design feels modern, but clearly pays homage to the traditional GTRs. It should stress continuity with the past and reflect Japanese pop culture. The GTR's square lines and vents were inspired by the giant robots of Japanese anime. It's a very strong looking solid, but at the same time very sophisticated, and even it has elegance and uh, some sexiness. So I think balancing that like, very uh, no, macho, masculine design and uh, elegance of the you know, surfacing lines, I think we, we, we made a very good balance of those things. Not everyone on the committee agrees with Nakamura. 
But the final decision is down to the man who has initiated the project, Carlos Goen. Goen backs his design chief's recommendation, and the new GTR begins to take shape. But will it be a car that can both keep the GTR devotees happy and put Nissan back on the world map of automotive cool? The GTR is a car with a unique cult following, established mainly in the virtual world of video games and films. It's a car rarely seen outside Japan, but that's about to change because newly imported boss Carlos Goen is determined to bring back the GTR, this time as a global supercar. Hiroshi Hasegawa is the man entrusted with turning the sketches into something more tangible. Four years down the line, and the front, the rear, and other details are still being tweaked, with the release of the car due within a year. Hasegawa's team works on a full-size clay model, based point for point on the technical drawings. It's the only way to get the true feel of the car as a car, rather than just as a stylish drawing on a screen. Hasegawa needs to know that every detail is right, inside and out. We want to protect the image of the GTR for the new design to show its heritage, its DNA. The design also needs to project efficiency and performance as it's branded as a supercar. We want to combine Japanese and modern culture for the GTR to be suitable for its overseas debut. It may be the most eagerly awaited car of its generation. So it has to look the part. All Japanese, yet sporty. And it also has to be aerodynamic, holding together at speeds of 300 kilometers per hour. More important than its looks, though, will be what the car can achieve. And whether it can lay claim to being a supercar. GTR needs to be fast, seriously fast. The challenge to match or beat the Porsche 911 Turbo at everything. And to do this, it needs a whole new engine. The most powerful production engine Nissan has ever built. Most factories mass produce these parts. But here, each engine is carefully crafted by one of eight specially selected technicians. This V6 480 horsepower engine is capable of rocketing the car from zero to 100 kilometers per hour in 3.5 seconds. Its rival, the Porsche, has similar specs. Six cylinders, twin turbo, same horsepower. The challenge is to build a car that is not only supercar fast, but has a cheaper price tag and can outhandle its rival. Balance and weight distribution are crucial. The GTR's engine sits behind the front axle and the gearbox is rear mounted. Two lightweight drive shafts distribute the power to four wheels, a unique all wheel drive system which the engineers believe will help produce one of the fastest production cars in the world. With the engines going into the first prototype GTRs, it's clear this is going to be a close race.
It's a chilly day at the Sendai Highland Raceway, high in the mountains in northern Japan. This secluded racetrack has been chosen for some of the top secret testing of the new Nissan GTR. The engineers are braving the cold to make sure that their latest innovations are actually going to function as expected. Computer analysis is all well and good, but nothing compares to a test behind the wheel. The prototypes arrive. It's the moment of truth. The unfinished details are covered up. They don't want anything that's not final to leak out. To add a little extra pressure, Carlos Goen, the big boss, is coming to test his pet project. He wants to compare the GTR directly with the Porsche 911. The engineering team is determined not to let him down. A final check before the serious testing begins. Engine designer Naoki Nakata is excited that his engine will be given a workout. This is the first shakedown for the car, so it's an emotional day for me. I want them to enjoy driving this car with a top speed of 300 kilometers per hour. The test driver makes his appearance. He's under instructions from GTR chief engineer and project leader Kazutoshi Mizuno to give this car a real workout today. Mizuno is the person bringing all this together. The success of the overall project rests on his shoulders. It's not long before the car's out on the track. The engineers can see their hard work is paying off. It's not just that this is the most powerful production engine Nissan has ever produced. The car's design is an aerodynamic mark. Its streamlined body creates as little drag as possible, better than almost any other production car. The GTR slips through the air more easily than the less streamlined body of the Porsche. Potentially a key advantage in the battle of the supercars. The airflow over and through the GTR creates downforce that stabilizes the car, resulting in more secure handling and better control around corners. What really holds back a sports car, though, is the time the transmission takes to change gear, especially in an automatic. Borg Warner, the hired-in experts in the field, came up with something really rather clever. It is the world's first transaxle dual-clutch transmission. What they did was provide not one, but two clutches. One for the odd gears, one for the even. So when you change into an odd gear, the next even one is all set and waiting, ready to engage in an instant. Everyone talks about, yeah, 0.2 seconds or something like that as a very fast shift time. This transmission actually shifts well below 0.1 seconds. So there are shifts which you can do in 50 milliseconds. And that's, uh, that's amazingly fast. For a complete automatic transmission, which, will, which provides you with all the shift comfort that you are used to with, an, with a conventional automatic. The other thing that's important for a car doing more than 300 kilometers per hour is that it stops again. And the GTR, despite the best efforts of the engineers, is not light, weighing in at over 1,700 kilograms. This means some serious grip is required on the four wheels. Huge, fully ventilated steel disc brakes are the order of the day. But under these conditions, even these monsters are at their limits. And Kazutoshi Mizuno wants to make sure they're not overheating. Yes, I'm going to present you. No problem. It's not just for himself that he's worried. Everything but everything has to work properly today. Because today is the day that Nissan boss Carlos Ghosn is coming for his first test drive of the new GTR.
I'm proud of what I've done, so I'm not nervous about the fact that Carlos Ghosn is coming today to see and drive the car. Carlos Ghosn is regarded as a superstar in the automotive industry. He's the CEO of two car companies on different continents, Nissan in Japan and Renault in France. But in Japan, his status has a little extra gloss because he's known as the man who saved Nissan. So his entrance is quite an event for the gathered project workers. He's just jetted in from his other job at Renault, so he's a little tired. Mr. Gong is the boss, and he's our parent. This project wouldn't have existed without him, so I want him to see every step of the project, and we want to cross-check if we've achieved everything he wanted us to achieve. Time for a quick change and a few laps in the GTR. First, though, a drive in the benchmark car, the Porsche 911 Turbo. No, I prefer to do more laps with the GTR. Okay. So here, maybe two laps, and then we do three. Okay. Okay. Gowan's not going to take the wheel himself. This calls for the steady hand of the test driver. I can get it. It's here. There it is. Yeah. The Porsche goes wherever the GTRs go. There's always the opportunity to drive both cars for direct comparison. Two super fast laps show going how the Porsche performs. He went at a very, very, uh, very high speed. It was uh, relatively. Uh, well balanced and uh, now it's the turn of the GTR. Will it live up to all Goan's hopes? After the Porsche, it's really going to have to show its mettle. Nissan's chief test driver, Toshio Suzuki, has driven Formula One, and he's got his work cut out. I want him to say that he wants to take this car home with him today. Fully aware that Goan needs to see the GTR at its best, he decides to give him a run for his money. Especially when it comes to the car's ability to take corners at speed. The GTR can pull some two Gs when cornering. It's not the best thing for someone coming straight off a long haul flight to be going through. And soon, Goan's going a little green at the gills. After a couple of laps, he's had enough. Yeah, they have a little bit sick. Yeah. But very nice driving, yeah. yeah. You drive it very well because it goes, it goes really to the limit. Yes, and comes back. Uh, that's that's very very good. Uh. That's a great car. I think. I think so far the work you've done is uh, is excellent. I'm very I'm very glad. I'm very glad to see uh, to see that. Yeah, that's uh, that's a terrific driving. He, he developed the car with you. He developed with me a Group C car. He chose because he knows how to take it to the limit. And you always feel very safe. In it with the car. That's great driving. Back to his normal color again. Goan calls a meeting to deliver his judgment. I'm a little bit sorry that being jet lagged after very good driving. Uh, <laughs> so I, ha I had to stop. I want to tell you that I'm very pleased with what you have accomplished. I congratulate you for the work Because everything I'm seeing now is very, very Just the reaction the team was hoping to hear. But as always with Carlos Goan, 
there's still room for improvement. The hardest, the hardest part is behind us, but I still have some work to do. My opinion is nothing compared to how the fans are going to you know, receive the card. I think it will be adopted because it's, uh, you know, that was my reaction. He's right, though. Final approval rests with the fans. And to persuade them, the car has to seem a worthy successor to the GTR name. Beating the Porsche in Germany will be part of it, as will capitalizing on the GTR's considerable cachet. But before any of that, the car will be thrown into the lion's den, chewed up and spat out. If it can survive that, it can survive anything. The brand new GTR, the dream of Nissan boss Carlos Ghosn, has taken shape after five years' work. Inside the company, there's plenty of excitement. But how will the world at large react to this new incarnation of a cult classic? <laughs> Nissan is a large international corporation, so nothing much can happen without a committee. Four days after his first test drive, Carlos Ghosn chairs a meeting at Company HQ. The big guns have all gathered to coordinate the launch of the first GTR to be sold globally. Goen is flanked by project manager Katsutoshi Mizuno and by chief creative Shiro Nakamura. Representatives from the key markets, the US, Japan and Europe are here, and it is a Brit who is running the global PR campaign. It's Simon Sproul's job to drum up excitement for the new GTR. The enthusiasts are the ones that are going to help us create the halo over the rest of the, of, of, of the brand. So His first order of business order is to identify the car's unique up. selling proposition, or USP in PR speak. Now, the interesting thing here is recognizing that Nissan is a mass market brand. We're not exotic or kind of esoteric like Ferrari or, 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 or Porsche, but we have the technology and the passion to deliver a car that can beat the 911 Turbo. The PR has already been very clever, releasing select tidbits to the eager public, such as the new GTR logo. We didn't even mention the logo. We just put up an image, and yet if people found it, and now they've distributed it on the blog. And in another unique marketing twist, Carlos Goen puts a ban on conventional advertising. If I see one uh, TV uh, stop, it's a failure. If I see it in the magazine, it's a failure. One of the curious ways of getting into the public eye, at least in Japan, is going to be a story in manga, that Japanese phenomenon of comics. Gohan has already featured in manga, but a new comic will feature both him and the new GTR. Though in this world of big business, nothing is left to chance. Who is controlling the, the, the manga story? Um, it's through communication. Content. Problems. The content. <coughs> through, through communication. You have somebody in communication yeah, really working with one them. One of the members of my yeah. team are working and, with And you are supervising it. Yes. I mean, you, yeah, you, we you know we what is the story which is being built because we don't want a story which is completely disconnected no. from... from uh, okay. Well, well as, as we discussed with them previously, it's going to be a, a kind of human interest story sure. wrapped around the GTR. Well, there is always a romance. If not, you will not sell it. But, <laughs> but we need also to talk about the GTR and the facts that happen around the GTR. Yeah. I understand. I mean, I, I don't care about the romance. I care about the GTR. <laughs> but the romance, they will, they, they will select whatever romance they want, you know. Sure. It, it, it's okay. Okay. Internationally, Nissan has an ace in its hand through one of the most successful tie-ins in the gaming world. The GTR has been a staple of the Gran Turismo games on the PlayStation platform for years. But the new version of the game is going to have the new GTR as its icon. A lot of exciting work going on with, with Sony PlayStation. Uh, Gran Turismo 5, we've decided that's the premium video game. And so that will be the first place where the GTR appears. And at the very moment the new car is presented at the Tokyo Motor Show, the virtual gaming version will be released online.
Over at Polyphony, where the Gran Turismo game is made, the programmers are hard at work. One of their key selling points is that previous versions of the game have sold over 40 million copies. They're counting on the new GTR having the same effect. Under conditions of strict secrecy, Nissan has sent them 3D design models and engineering documents and photographs of the prototype. Thousands and thousands of photographs. Gran Turismo is all about the realism. Designers are dedicated to producing a virtual GTR that is as true to life as it's possible for a console driving car to be. We've always aimed to make our games as accurate as possible to the real cars. But this one stands out. It shows how our relationship with Nissan is very close. For most GTR fans, the Gran Turismo video game is the closest contact they'll ever have with the car. So the game makers will be working around the clock to meet the exacting demands of the fans, not to mention their own. Springtime in Germany, a time of renewal and rebirth, a time of optimism and peace, which is about to be shattered by the GTR. Nürburgring is home to what enthusiasts reckon is one of the hardest race tracks in the world. It's become a kind of default racing benchmark. An earlier generation of GTRs set a fastest lap time for a production car here 10 years ago. But today's not about lap times and speed. Today's about making an impression on foreign turf. The Porsche's home territory, the epicenter of Teutonic automotive perfection. And it's well known that in Germany they like things to be clean. And here they are, the pickiest members of the public. The seen it all before, the motoring journalists. It's still quite early in the car's development. There's six months to go until the car is officially launched. It's unusual to show a car that's not quite finished yet. But this is all part of the campaign to build excitement for the new GTR. And maybe face up to some tough criticism from the hard men of motoring. Before they're even allowed anywhere near the car itself, it's lecture time with Kazutoshi Mizuno. Images have leaked into the public domain. Now he reveals to them for the first time what the new GTR is all about. So, mission vibration. It's he tells them about the engine, the body, has a good build materials, carbon injection material. This is a fast service of ours. Brakes. So it's very important. High performance. Computer controls. And this screen from eyes, same eye. Ninety minutes same later, eyes. the journalists know more than they ever thought they wanted to know about the new GTR. Not that it does them much good. The news is embargoed until the car is launched six months down the road. Finally, the journalists are allowed into the garage to meet the GTR face to face. They don't seem to be very impressed. But Nissan Executive Vice President Carlos Tavares is very positive about this exercise. I don't think it's really a risk. I think it's just uh, a way to share passion for cars with passionate people because I believe those experts, despite the fact that they drive a lot of different cars, are also passionate people. This kind of event is very unusual because they've allowed us to see the car at a relatively early stage in the in the development so you know although we've known that the car's been coming for a long time and seen teaser pictures of concepts and stuff it's um it's quite a privilege i think to be here and and have so much access to the car in different conditions and all the engineers here it's it's a real buzz but the proof is not in the engineering and it's not in the looks it's in the drive and these guys who have been behind the wheel of pretty much every car on the market are going to get to take the new toy out for a drive. 
First, they can go for a spin on the public roads. And to encourage them to compare it to the arch-rival Porsche, a 911 has been provided for them to take out, too. The 911 is a benchmark for everybody. The 911 Turbo, frankly, I was surprised that the GTR was able to run with it uh, going as quickly as it did. And the reaction is everything the Japanese have hoped for. It's going to be pretty fast. Uh, that became apparent when we did a little back-to-back -back running this afternoon to terrorizing the countryside. Boy, it's hard to pick between them. The run through the countryside tests the car's handling abilities. Next up, a high-speed run courtesy of a section of Germany's famous highway system, the Autobahn, where there is no speed limit. Once you hit speeds of, I think I hit 175 today, I mean, I could feel the downforce really working. It's really, really composed, and I could almost take my hands off it, like 130, 140, 140 miles an hour. I mean, it's, it felt that safe. It tracked really well. But the real supercar test happens on the track. So out the journalists all go again to take a lap around the Nürburgring. One of the most critical eyes cast over the GTR belongs to international journalist Georg Kacher, who has already admitted he's come here expecting to be profoundly underwhelmed. Okay. Georg isn't one to spare the car, either. Typically, all-wheel drive cars are boring because of the torque split. They're very safe. And very safe means understeer, roll, Almost despite himself, Georg begins to be impressed by the car. This one is a car that's both safe and quick. It's, it's really a vehicle like a Porsche or like a Ferrari, which um, has racing genes in it. And the conclusion? There's only a couple of things. I mean, it's very heavy. I am too, so I halfway pardon it for that, but being heavy, it's heavy on everything. It's heavy on the brakes, it's heavy on the tires, it's heavy on the chassis, so it's not as nimble. It's not as, as, as chuckable, quite as chuckable, but apart from that, it's wonderful. Worst thing about this, helmet hair. <laughs> Uh, I, I kind of go, wow, this reminds me of me playing my you know, PlayStation uh, 2 with the uh, Gran Turismo 4. I, it, it was almost eerie. I go, wow, this is, this is, this is eerie. You know, I mean, the sounds, the, you know, the way the car accelerates, the way you're kind of going into a corner. I mean, it was eerily, eerily reminiscent of uh, the Gran Turismo game in the PlayStation. Words that would really please the creators of Gran Turismo. available to the public. It's a short film clip showing the car, complete with its characteristic camouflage tarps over front and rear. It's another titillation for the public chomping at the bit to see the real thing. And at times, it's truly hard to tell it apart from the reality. But it's not all been plain sailing. There were two challenges. The technical requirements to create PS3 game software were demanding. And since the GTR is such an important car for Nissan, a few things including its final look were not decided on until very late in the project. As a tribute to the game designers, Nissan has also invited them to create the real car's multi-function dash display. Nissan felt they couldn't improve on the logic and clarity of the game maker's interface. 
、その GTR っていう車が、えー、日本生まれ This car was born in Japan. I guess GTR's high technology and its Japanese-ness match the image of our games. Hidden from view, the game car awaits its release simultaneously with the real car. And the big date? The Tokyo Motor Show looms. The final showdown with the Porsche 911 will soon take place, and then the public will deliver its verdict. Carlos Ghosn, the savior of Nissan, has demanded nothing but the best for the company's new signature supercar, the revamped GTR. It's taxed the technicians and it's impressed the journalists. Now it's time to release it into the world. And the technicians at Polyphony are poised to release the virtual Gran Turismo GTR simultaneously with the real car. The Tokyo Motor Show is one of the world's major car shows. It's a display case for some of the most outrageous concept cars the manufacturers can come up with. And this year's show will host almost one and a half million visitors. Against all the competition from all over the world, the GTR has to make an impact. No other manufacturer is offering anything comparable. An affordable supercar. And with the buzz created by Nissan's PR machine, It's sure to attract interest. Back in Germany, at the Nürburgring, it's going to do a timed lap of the Nordschleife. The 20.8 kilometer loop of challenging track that famous race car driver Jackie Stewart christened the Green Hell. The time to beat? The benchmark car on this benchmark track, the Porsche 911 Turbo, with 7 minutes and 40 seconds. Once again, Toshio Suzuki is at the wheel. Carlos Goen is on a tight schedule. We have uh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Okay. Uh, no last-minute nerves for the man about to introduce a Japanese supercar. So it's five years of intense work, a lot of obstacles, problems. Being able to show it to people who are passionate about this kind of products is, is particularly exciting. And that moment is about to arrive. At the Nissan stand, the GTR's attack on the Porsche's Nürburgring lap is gripping the audience. The end of the lap will be the cue for the car to emerge. The GTR flies across the line at the Nürburgring in Germany. And the time? The Porsche has been beaten by more than a second. It's a moment of vindication for Goen. He brings the car out at its moment of triumph. Revealed for the first time to the public in the real world and the virtual world. And the reception is nothing short of rapturous. A Japanese icon has been revealed. What you see is Nissan's ultimate physical expression, the all-new Nissan GTR. At last, the world can see the new GTR. A combination of Japanese technology and style. Carlos Goen's automotive dream has been made real. We've been working on this car for five years. We put a lot of technology, a lot of hard efforts. The fact of seeing, you know, a big crowd coming and really, you know, supporting us, very important.
how the plants can start rolling. The production GTR can be built, bought, and put on the road. But only in Japan to start with. Followed by the United States, then Britain and Europe, and finally other markets. It's a staggered release, not only because fewer than 12,000 will be built a year, but also to keep the GTR exclusive and therefore desirable. But whether this car will realize Carlos Ghosn's ambitions remains to be seen. That's now up to the marketplace. But it's a car that everyone in Nissan is proud of, from factory worker to chief executive. And of course, Carlos Ghosn has already got one on order. I'm, I'm very excited because I'm getting the car number one, and it's in my garage tonight. I'm going to be able finally to drive it.